People who have had a stalker, how did you realize you were being stalked? Part 5 for more. Such content, please like and subscribe. Our channel Thread Tonic. Account 1. So I was in like 9th or 10th grade, and I went to this small little punk show at a coffee shop a few towns over from where I lived. I can't remember who approached who first, but this girl and I started talking. She seemed cool. And at the end of the show, we exchanged numbers and then parted ways. This was before cell phones were popular and texting didn't exist. So it started off with her calling me every day on the house phone. Sometimes I'd be busy. I also played soccer year-round and played and trained like six coins seven days a week, and she'd get angry I'd be too busy to talk to her. Eventually, this got annoying, and since we had caller ID, I just started ignoring her calls. Then she started in with calling from blocked or different numbers. By then, I told her I wasn't interested and told her to kick rocks. She cried and told me she loved me, despite us only meeting once and talking on the phone a few times for probably less than an hour each time. Eventually, I told my parents to only answer calls from numbers they recognized, but this girl kept calling so much my parents changed our number. At that point, I thought I was finally done. W her. So flash forward a few weeks, and I'm taking a train into the city, and guess what? She just so happens to pop up on my train car. I was pissed and moved cars, and she just kept following me and crying it was so weird. She followed me off the train and said all she wanted to do was hang out with me. I told her to shove off, and if she didn't, I told her my parents and I had talked about getting the police involved. This really seemed to piss her off, but she finally walked off. Flash forward to summer and my summer job all through high school. I was a lifeguard. One day I walk into work and we have a new hire, Any, you guessed it. It was this girl. I finally went to the police, but there wasn't much they could do. Back then... I didn't have call logs or texts to prove I was being stalked. I spoke to my employer and told them about the issue, and they said they essentially couldn't fire her, but would put us on different shifts. After a while, she must have caught on to this. She started spending all of her time at the pool on and off the clock. Again, there was little my job could do. So she would creepily stare at me and try to talk to me while I was doing my job. I was miserable. And this girl was chasing away girls I was friends with and telling people at work we were in a relationship. It was so terrible. Eventually, I confronted her and said some really mean things, but I was tired of her. Eventually, she learned from someone at work where I lived. She would sit outside on the sidewalk and just wait for me to come out to go to school or practice or work and just act insane. She would cry and scream and ask why I just wouldn't love her back, etc as she sat outside my house like clockwork. Since we were minors, my parents decided to call the police on her because she was clearly not going to school. The police approached her a few times, but she would still sit outside, but now she was hiding in bushes or trees. At one point, I got really depressed and was worried I'd never be able to get this girl to leave me alone, and my parents started having real conversations about moving to get away from her as the police still were unwilling to help. I was so entrenched at school with my friends and sports and was so devastated. Eventually, my grandmother loaned us money to hire a private investigator to follow her around and create an opportunity to watch her and prove the pattern of stalking pictures upon pictures of her sitting outside our house at all hours. One day I planned to go visit a friend and didn't see her outside and thought maybe I had gotten lucky that day and she just wasn't around. So I step out of my front door and start walking in the direction of my friend's house. Out of nowhere, she steps out from behind a car and everything was a blur from there. She attacked me. She was trying to punch me and scratch me. And while I don't remember a whole lot about her attacking me, I got lucky and someone called the police after seeing us fighting, the police showed up, and of course I was taken into custody despite my injuries. I was taken to the station and was able to get the arresting officers to let me speak to the detective who had been working with me, but never was willing to charge this girl. My parents showed up with the investigator we had hired and all the evidence was shown to the police. They finally, after almost a year, finally found the girl and charged her with stalking. I had to go to court and I finally saw the parents of this girl. By this time, I was a junior in high school and she had been disrupting my life for almost a year and a half. 
Eventually, she accepted a plea which required her to receive mental health help and was put on probation. She was no longer allowed to intrude on my life and my nightmare was finally over. I went off to college and would have terrible nightmares that she had found me there too. After a few years, I stopped looking over my shoulder and was able to move on, but it was a deeply disturbing time for me. People often think stalking is something that only happens in adulthood, but it is rampant during teen years, and often the justice system overlooks this behavior as just kids acting out. Stalking laws have gotten so much better, and with technology the way it is today, it's so much easier to prove. I hope no one has to deal with a situation like this. Account 2. Not me, but my sister had one in high school. She would get random texts saying how good she looked that day and other creepy things. When she finally told me, my cousin and a few friends followed her around to see if one of us would spot the guy. My friend saw one guy a few times. We followed him to his car, called the number, and he picked up. They had to physically hold me down after I beat the shit out of him, told him if he tried contacting her in any way, I would cut off his balls. She was never bothered again. Account 3. A year ago, I was riding my bike out to my local Burger King for some lunch. For some context, this place has a main lot, but the lot has a smaller outlet behind the building that connects to a larger shopping complex. And I am male, 19 at the time, so I'm riding on a busy main street, and I come up to one of the several entrances to the shopping complex. This dark-colored Cadillac XTS with this white male who appeared to be in his late 30s or early 40s behind the wheel, was blocking the sidewalk I'm riding on. No bike lane as I'm riding towards it. The dude backs up and I give him a thank you, wave, and smile. I think a minute later, I approach a red light. I see his Cadillac on the right lane closest to me, and him looking back at me. His body turned around a bit in his seat, looking straight at me. Traffic goes, and I see him turn off into another entrance to this shopping complex. I make it to the Burger King. And who do I see? Cadillac driver. He had driven through the complex to the back of Burger King, through that little outlet. So as I'm coming in, we're basically moving towards each other, and I can see he is looking at me, not really breaking contact. As he turned his car around to the front of the building, he is still looking at me. He creeps to the front of the building and sits there. I ride up onto the sidewalk and chain my bike up. I walk off and I stop, taking a good look at his car and his plate. I pull my phone out to jot the bit of information down, and he drives off, so nothing of the traumatic sort happened, but it was a very strange encounter. Account 4. So back when I live in Mexico, me and my friend, his name in this story is Jose. So me and Jose would play till dark in Mexico, every time me, him played outside. We see some bushes moving and strange movements around my house. This mysterious thing would follow us to stores and would follow us in the dark and shit. Every time we hang out, it got louder and more obvious someone was there, but Jose and I thought it was just a dog. So we didn't really care until Jose and my dad and I walked to the bush too, see a guy in black and I can't really remember much, but he was in all black, in there with a camera. Then my dad beat him up to a near-death situation, and that's basically what happened when I was in Mexico. Account 5. I had this guy friend who would always tell me that he liked me during high school, but I was not interested in him. On the end of the year of my freshman year, he cornered me near at the library and confessed his feelings that he loved me, but I still was not interested in him. Within the rest of my years in high school, I kept my distance from him but he seemed really normal after that having a girlfriend. Then a few years ago, I just broken up with my ex-boyfriend, we had a mutual friend, that told him about the breakup between me and my ex. He would message me in the middle of the night on Messenger, and I would just see and go back to sleep. Every time I checked on the message, he would respond without me messaging him. I had to message him back that said I had trauma with his advances in high school, and I really felt uncomfortable with him messaging in the middle of the night without me responding. If he really did respect me, I would block him, and he would never contact with me again. I never heard from him since, and hope that he never contacts me again. Account 6. He was schizophrenic and smelled bad, so nobody would partner with him in my physics class. I did cause I wanted to be nice. 
He was actually really smart and nice to talk to about the class, until he started following me, from school to my house, and trying to hold my hand in class and being suspiciously near my friends and I all the time. He also did the same thing, but escalated into something worse, to a girl my ex was friends with, told the school they did nothing about it because he hadn't actually done anything. Now we're both in college and departed. Thank God he goes to Yale majoring in physics and heard I was majoring in it too, so he wanted to see if I'd want to keep in touch. Told him to have a good summer and blocked him. Account 7. In my early 20s, I had the blessing of having not one, but two stalkers. Simultaneously, can't make this shit up. One was a nightmare, and one was a patient I took care of at the hospital. I'll tell the story of the creep as this one was more disturbing. Long post, but it's for my friends that enjoy a creepy experience. I broke up with the SO, and the next morning I had an unsigned letter on my car saying if I needed anyone to talk to, they were around. I was creeped out, but young and naive, so I threw the letter away and ignored it. Shortly after, I realized one day that the key to home that my SO gave back to me was missing. Again, I brushed it off because I always lose shit. ADD life, y'all. It started small, but I started to have bizarre events at my house. One day I came home, and my blinds upstairs were closed that I never closed and the lights were on. I called the cops and was told I must have forgotten them. Fine. Then I came home and my jewelry boxes were moved onto a desk chair. Granted, all my shit is costume jewelry, but again called the cops. Was told it was probably my ex doing it. So it's fine, not fine but I'm clearly being ignored here. One of the other disturbing events that occurred was that I noted that my spare car key was missing. I reported that as well and was told by the cops I misplaced it. I drove out to the city one night for dinner and beers. About 25 men from where I lived, I never leave windows open in the city because I'm not an idiot. When I went back to my car that evening, all of my windows and sunroof were open with my spare key sitting on the front seat. Finally. I'm moving out of this damn place. I came home late from work and wanted to pack a few boxes before I went to bed. I go to the basement and notice immediately that it feels colder than usual. I look around the corner and the window is smashed with boxes propped up underneath so someone could let themselves in. Out, I freak the F out. I run upstairs to grab my phone to call 911 and see that my missing house key is sitting on my kitchen table. Took the cops a cool 45 men to finally get to my damn house. I move to the city and all the creep shit stops. A few months later, I received a phone call from a police officer I knew from my old town. Now, get this. The police arrested a man in my new city for trying to break into an ATM machine. When he gets to the station, he starts ranting that he need to pay for his sex addiction and how he's been stalking not just me, but another girl's in the neighborhood. So in addition to me, he was also doing the same shit to a young mother a few doors down. The cops say they have a bag of my belongings and ask if I want it back. It's a bunch of my undies and costume jewelry that my grandma gave me as a child. I then learned that I had actually worked with this asshat at a local grocery store a few years back when I was in college. Didn't recognize him, but realized he was the creepy produce guy that all the girls stayed away from. The perv went to jail because his dumb ass stole pictures from the neighbor's computer. Since he took pictures that she had of her kids in a bathtub, they classified it as pornography and he got bigger charges against him. The police apologized to me for not believing my story, but it pisses me off that I was ignored simply for being a young female. Morale to the story. Always go with your gut feel about the creepy produce guy. Account 8. He was my delivery driver. Got my details from my parcels he was delivering to my home, found me on FB, and kept messaging me after repeated attempts of saying I'm not interested, I'm engaged. He made alter accounts after I blocked him, my fiancé contacted his sister and told him to cut it out before he involves himself more. She basically said, ah, shit, this isn't the first time. If he contacts her again, call the police. We need all the girls to report him to be able to stop him. Apparently, he's tore his family apart with his behavior and has had many angry men banging on their door. Account 9. I had a friend in high school who ended up going to the same town for college that I did. 
We were friends in college, too. When I started to date my girlfriend, all three of us became friends. And that's where things got a little weird. At Christmas time, the three of us exchanged gifts. We got him something small. He got me something small, but he got my wife airline tickets to go visit her sister. After school, I moved back to the town that I came from, along with my girlfriend. He stayed in the college town, which was about three hours away. At this point, we knew the guy was weird. He sent my wife a couple of weird poems, with weird rantings on the backs of the poems. Then we started to get weird phone calls in middle of the night. He called my mom, my wife's parents, and friends of ours telling people that I had AIDS, I don't, and that I was gay, I'm not. Then he started driving down three hours from the college town to my town and parking across the street from my house. I called the cops multiple times. They told me there was nothing they can do unless he threatened to kill me. I called his dad. I found out that he was bipolar and his dad thought that he was just having an episode because he stopped taking his meds but that he was harmless. We were scared shitless. The last time I saw him, I left my house to go get a pizza and he was parked out front. At this point, I kept a baseball bat by my front door. I grabbed the bat and yelled, I'm going to fucking kill you. He started his truck and took off. I jumped in my car and chased him. While I was chasing him, I called 911. They told me to stop, dispatched cops to my house who were waiting for me when I got back. This wasn't the first time I had called, so they were familiar with what was going on. They were sympathetic because this wasn't the first time I called, but FYI cops frown on you chasing people with a baseball bat. Next time I heard about him, he had been arrested for going into a Walmart and throwing fake blood all over everything. He was arrested and taken to jail when he threatened to kill himself, so they transferred him to a mental facility. Then I started getting calls over and over from the mental facility. I called back and said one of your patients is calling me, and they told me that they couldn't confirm if he was even there. Eventually, the call stopped. Life went on. And year or two later, my girlfriend and I got engaged. We did all the wedding stuff, signed up for registries, etc. Odd, apparently he saw this information online because we started getting calls and stuff in the mail from him again. A year or so after we got married, I got a call from a friend telling me that he had died. I could not have been happier. Fuck that guy. Account 10. There was a girl at school in 8th or 9th grade. She was always known as the Weeaboo Kid always talked about anime, and acted out as anime characters from time to time. Most people stayed away from her but were fine with her, was just known as the weird kid from school. One day, out of nowhere, she approaches me at my locker and confesses her true feelings that were forcibly locked away for so long. Her words not mine. Keep in mind that we have no classes together and only heard about her from other classmates. Obviously, I politely rejected her. She then had a sad, devastating look on her face, then sucked that up and stuck her hands in her pants and started to moan loudly. Everyone, of course, stares at me and the weeaboo kid. Until one of the school faculty saw and dragged her away from me, I thought that was the end of it, and continued my day as normal. Boy, was I wrong. Back then, I walked to school. Now, ever since that incident happened, I have caught her multiple times following me at a distance when I confronted her about it. She told me how her mom couldn't afford gas in her car. Her mother's car was an electric car. So now I knew she became an obsessive stalker. That's when things took a turn. I had her slip in pieces of paper of fan art, of me and her in my locker, had her sit with me during lunch, and tried to propose to me mutable times. Now, before the fan art phase of it. Not gonna lie, I kind of liked it. But that was taken too far. I decided to confront the girl with her group of weeaboo friends and told her to stop and leave me alone. She, of course, bawled her eye holes out. I've then caught her following me home and peeking through windows, but then one day, she was never seen again. Morale, don't try to shoot the sheriff. Account 11. A man used to come into my work and talk with me every day. He started only going through my till running into me on my lunch breaks and offering to take me somewhere. Eventually, on my walks to school, his red truck started following me. I would see it everywhere. I told my friend's dad and he started driving me. One day, he was dropping me off, but the red truck stopped right behind our car, and he told me to stay in the car. 
After that, he disappeared, and I found out he's in prison for attempted murder or his wife. Account 12. My parents stalk us because I cut them out. They are mentally ill, unstable, and abusive. They send messages, send the police for fake wellness checks, threaten to sue for grandparents' rights, then love bomb us with gifts in the driveway. I have filed it, so if they come on my property, it is trespassing. But the police and law won't do anything else. It doesn't matter that my dad almost killed me at least twice. I can't get a restraining order. They have called to my kids from the sidewalk. But luckily, my husband was right there. My husband scared the neighbor yesterday because he didn't recognize her and saw her staring at our kids, and he went over and asked if he could help her. It's hell. My dad will try to murder me someday. I am the evil bitch who stole their grandkids. No, I don't own a gun. I have PTSD, depression, anxiety, ADHD, and bipolar too. While I can't imagine doing anything to myself or others, I don't want guns in my house. If I hesitate, it is just putting a gun in the hands of my stalker. I do have an alarm and cameras. The police in my town is a joke. They are cracking down on distracted drivers and the homeless. But helping me is out of question.